Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the chapter Electrochemistry. In part 1, I told you about electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells. Moving on with our study of electrochemical cells, I told you about the galvanic cell. So in this video, we are going to discuss a little bit more about the galvanic cell. The galvanic cell is also known as the Daniel cell or the voltaic cell. As I told you in the previous video, that when you have a redox reaction, a spontaneous redox reaction, the free energy of the spontaneous redox reaction, which is available in the form of electrons, is converted into electrical energy. And that electrical energy is used to run a motor or to light up a bulb or to do any electrical work. This is the job of a galvanic cell where a redox, a spontaneous redox reaction, its energy is used and converted into electrical energy. So we say in this, the Gibbs free energy of the spontaneous redox reaction is converted into electrical work or is used up in the form of electrical work. If you really notice a redox reaction, there are two processes. The word redox itself means that there are two opposing processes which are occurring in the reaction. One is reduction and the other is oxidation. So you can divide this process into two halves. One half of this reaction would be where zinc is getting oxidized and the other half would be where copper is getting reduced. So we write these half reactions separately. That is copper ions, they gain two electrons and they get reduced to give us solid copper and solid neutral copper. This is the reduction half reaction. And zinc, zinc loses two electrons and when it loses two ele electrons, it turns into the ion, that is the zinc ion and the two electrons which are given out, which means that zinc gets oxidized. Therefore, this half of the reaction is the oxidation half. So in one, one part of the reaction is getting oxidized and the other reactant is getting reduced. So we divide the reaction into two halves, that is the oxidation half and the reduction half. And as I told you in the previous video, we carry out both these processes in two different, different chambers. We put them in two different beakers. So we take the oxidation half and the reduction half. And what do we do for the oxidation half? What is getting oxidized? Zinc is getting oxidized. So in the oxidation half, we take a zinc rod and we dip it in zinc sulfate solution. And the reduction half is another beaker where you have copper sulfate solution and copper rod dipped in it. Now, these two electrodes are created and the reduction half and the oxidation half are separated. But how are they joined? They are joined by two ways to complete the circuit. One, they are joined externally through a wire and this wire is through which the electrons that are given out by zinc would travel to copper. So, the external wire connects the two electrodes and which acts as the uh, transport medium for the electrons. And in order to complete the circuit, the two solutions are connected via a salt bridge. As I told you in the previous video, the salt bridge is usually KCl and ammonium nitrate, which is, uh, which is gelled with agar agar. By heating it up with agar agar, a jelly-like substance is made which stays inside the salt bridge. And this acts as the connection between the two internally, between the two solutions internally. So that is how we divide the entire reaction into two halves and separate them out and yet connect them externally. So the half cells are also called redox couples and each half cell has a metallic electrode dipped in an electrolyte. Did we see here? We had the metallic electrode was zinc in this case and the electrolyte was zinc sulfate and here the electrode is copper and the solution or the electrolyte is copper sulfate solution. So they dip in the cell in the same electrolytes, sorry, it has a metallic electrode dipped in an electrolyte. Sometimes in some cells you have both the electrodes dipping in the same electrolytic solution. They, the two solutions are not different, they both, both the rods dip in the same solution. In that case, you do not need a salt bridge because you do not need anything to connect the two solutions because the solution is one and therefore the ions can transfer freely to them on their own. 
So sometimes both electrodes dip in the same electrolyte, so there is no need of a salt bridge. Now what happens at each electrode? There is a process that is occurring. What is the electrode? The electrode is actually the metal and its salt solution. So what happens? At the electrode, there are two processes that are occurring. The ion that is present inside the salt solution, for example, the zinc ions in this case, the zinc ions are positively charged. They will have a tendency to come and get deposited on the electrode, the neutral electrode. And thereby, as they come and get deposited on the neutral electrode, the zinc ions were positively charged, therefore they have a tendency to turn the electrode positive. At the same time, the neutral atoms which are present in the zinc rod, which are in contact with the solution, they have a tendency to lose electrons and turn into zinc ions and enter the solution as zinc ions. Now, these are two opposing processes. On one hand, the zinc ions are trying to make the electrode positive. On the other hand, the zinc atoms want to lose their electrons and escape and thereby making the electrode negative. Now, when these two opposing processes, there is a tendency of both of these processes to occur and both will occur until equilibrium is established. Once the equilibrium is established, a difference in potential will be created. A charge or separation of charges is created. And since a separation of charges is created, which process has a stronger tendency? Whether the zinc ions to deposit on the electrode or the zinc atoms to give out electrons and enter the electrode. So whether the electrode would be positive as a result of zinc ions collecting around it or would it be negative because of a larger number of zinc atoms going into the solution as zinc ions and leaving the electrons and turning it, ele turning it negative. So the positive or negative nature at equilibrium will depend on the competition between these two opposing processes. Whichever is better, that is the one, that is the charge that the electrode would have. And this charge or potential that is created is known as the electrode potential. Right? Now let me just read this out. At each electrode electrolyte interface, there is a tendency of the ions to deposit and make it positive. The ions have a tendency to deposit on the electrode and make it positive. And the metal atoms have a tendency to lose electrons and enter the solution, leaving the electrode negative. At equilibrium, therefore, there is a separation of charges. There are two charges. Separation of charges means positive and negative is created. And the electrode may be positive or negative with respect to the solution, depending on which process is, uh, is better or strong, which tendency is stronger. Therefore, a potential difference develops between the electrode and the electrolyte. And this is known as the electrode potential. If you have all the concentrations of all the solution, now there will be an electrode. Every electrode has its own electrode potential. Just as we talked of zinc, in the case of this beaker also, the copper atoms will try to enter by losing their electrons and the copper ions will try to deposit here and create, make it positive, while the copper atoms which enter the solution will try to make it negative. So now you have both, both the electrodes have their own potential which is known as the electrode potential. If the concentrations of all the species at these potentials, whose potentials or the half cells, if their concentrations is uh, a molar concentration, one mole, if that is the concentration, then the potential is known as the standard electrode potential. And there is one more thing about standard electrode potential which is important. Whenever we compare the electrode potentials, as I told you, either the oxidation is being favored or reduction is being favored at an electrode. So due to which the it will either have a positive charge or it will have a negative charge. But how can you compare two potentials if one is positive and the other is negative? Isn't it easier to compare them when you compare the same tendency? Like who runs faster? In order to know who runs faster, you must know the running capacity of two people. 
and if you have one person running and the other flying now tell me who runs faster you don't know so when you are comparing them you can't say this is getting oxidized this is getting reduced so let us compare their potentials we can't compare them when both the processes are different in order to compare them we must be calculating the same quality that is both of them should be running so according to IUPAC and according to convention it has been decided that when you are comparing the electrode potentials of different of different electrodes they should all be standard which means that their concentrations should be molar concentration and we should compare only the reduction potentials one of the two and it was chosen okay we are going to compare the reduction potentials so now when we compare the the potentials the standard electrode potentials we are actually talking of only the reduction potential right so we talk of the standard electrode potential which is the reduction potential now if we talk of reduction potential then whenever we are measuring you're measuring running so you're always calculating about running so the more the reduction the more positive will the value be lesser the reduction the more negative the value will be so oxidation occurs at the anode oxidation means it is getting oxidized so its reduction potential should have a value which is negative and at uh, the cathode reduction is occurring and we said reduction potential is given a value so reduction is a positive value while oxidation has a negative value so anode the potential at the anode will have a negative value and the potential at the cathode will have a positive value right so now we want to know the potential difference between the two electrodes the greater the potential difference the more would be the electricity that would be generated the stronger would be the cell so the you need to know the difference between the electrode potentials of the two uh, half cells and in order to know that again we use convention because if imagine if each one of us just put the anode anywhere and the cathode anywhere and we calculated the electrode potential we might sometimes and we were calculating what oxidation potential at one time and reduction potential at any at another time all readings of potential differences for every observer would be different and in order to have one standard we need to be observing the we need to have a pattern to it so what was the convention that was agreed upon first i told you that we would only calculate reduction potential the value of reduction potential would be positive so automatically oxidation is the opposite of reduction therefore what if it is oxidation that is occurring how much of it is occurring that much of negative value you will have right so the electrode potential the positive and the potential difference can be calculated but again for numerical ease we would want the electrode potential to always have a positive value desirably it should have a positive value so if we want a positive value mathematically we must we know reduction potential is positive and oxidation potential is negative or rather uh, reduction potential of the oxidation half is negative i should not call it oxidation potential so reduction potential for the reducing half is positive and reduction potential for the oxidation half is negative in order to get a positive value to uh, when you find out the difference what you do you write the uh, value which is positive minus the value that is negative so what do you get the positive value minus minus becomes positive so you it, the answer will always be a positive value so that was desirable and that's the reason why this convention was chosen so what is the convention let us again understand it we always write the anode on the left side and the cathode on the right side when you're writing it down you write the anode to the left and the cathode will be to your right and potential difference when you're calculating between the two the it is known as the emf of the cell or the electromotive force the greater the emf the more will be the tendency the more will be the electricity generated and what is electromotive force it is nothing but the potential difference between the two electrodes so how do you calculate it the emf of the cell or the potential difference between the two cells uh, between the two halves of a cell is the electrode potential on the right minus electrode potential on the left e right minus e left 
and right is cathode and left is anode. The value of right is positive and the value of left is negative. So positive minus minus becomes positive. Therefore, you'll find out the numerical sum of the two uh, potentials. And that will give you the EMF of the cell. That is how we calculate the EMF of a cell. For example, in this cell, how do we write it? It would be on the right side, that is E right is cathode. We have the copper electrode. Now, how do you write the uh, electrode? When you're showing the electrode, how do you show it? You write the oxidized and the reduced form of the same metal and you put a slash between them. So EMF of Cu2 positive slash Cu. So the oxidized and the reduced form are written like this. Minus EMF uh, or the electrode potential of the left would be E zinc in the oxidized form slash zinc in the reduced form or neutral form. This is just how convention is and when you carry out, when you solve your numerical problems, you have to keep this in mind. The convention has to be kept in mind. How do you write an electrochemical cell? Like you remember we used to, we write uh, chemical equations in order to explain how a chemical reaction occurs. In the same way, there is convention to, there is an accepted way of expressing the or telling what the electrochemical cell is like. And that method of writing it down is how do you present or the representation of a cell? How is it done by formula? You write the, now what is zinc? Zinc is the anode. So you write the left side, left part first. So left is zinc, is converting into zinc ion, right? You are showing the process here. Now this is representation of the cell. Not, I am not talking of the electrode protection. I am talking of representation of the cell. So you write zinc is getting oxidized to Zn2 positive that is zinc solid and is getting oxidized to Zn2 positive in the aqueous medium and you put a double slash. The double slash or the double lines, slanting lines, that represents the salt bridge. It shows the presence of a salt bridge and on the other side of the salt bridge, that is on the right side now, you have copper ions which are getting reduced to copper, solid copper. So copper ions, so when you are representing the cell, you are actually writing down the process. But when you are talking of electrode potential, you are talking of reduction potential only, therefore you are only showing reduction. I want this to be very clear. When you are writing the EMF or, or when you are calculating the EMF of the cell, you are only writing the reduction potential. So by convention, you will be writing only reduction. But when you are showing the entire, when you are representing the cell, you will show the actual process, which is happening on the left side and what is happening on the right side. And between the two, you will put a salt bridge, which is represented by two slashes, that is two uh, slanting lines. That is how you represent a, a galvanic cell. So with this, I finish this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.